Well, welcome to the EUE Den and thanks for uh, checking out the video. This is lesson number three in the intermediate lessons and today we're going to work on uh, uh, organizing our phrases to better communicate with our band members and our listeners. Uh, during these first couple lessons, you know, we've been working on trying to find uh, kind of the for free things, like what are things that we could do to position ourselves to get a better result immediately without a lot of practice. And uh, the list of these is growing, so it'll be a couple more lessons where we're talking about this kind of thing. And then hopefully after that, we can get into the nitty gritties of, you know, scale building and and uh, how to apply those in a practice environment and make your uh, practice sessions a little bit more fun. If you're not a member of the den, uh, just go to kurtsite.com. That'll give you a portal to the membership. And you can, uh, you know, inside the membership, there's a bunch of play alongs and uh, charts and lessons and all kinds of stuff. And I'm, it's still growing. And if you have any suggestions or, or comments, please uh, contact me with me. My email is available in there. And, and I would love to hear from you. So today, we're organizing our phrases. So uh, jazz improvisation is spontaneous composition, and composition is organizing something. If you're writing a composition or you're writing a musical composition, it's organizing to communicate, right? So, so we don't have the luxury of like a blackboard and a chalkboard and like, you know, listing all of our motives and then playing each one and choosing the best ones and putting them together that way. We don't have that much time. We just have to instantly do it. So we need a very graceful way of organizing our data. And I have one that I've noticed in performance and I don't really know where I learned this. I don't remember a specific lesson, but it does track back to the blues. So if we listen to a blues tune, you know, during the first four bars, like that functions as a one chord, they normally lyrically make a statement, you know, and then during the second four bars that functions as a four chord, they normally repeat the statement. And then in the last four bars, which functions as a five chord, they, they elaborate upon the statement. So it's like a very simple example would be like this, like, you woke up this morning, couldn't find my keys. That's a one chord, right? And now we're going to repeat this statement on the four chord. Woke up this morning, I couldn't find my keys. Now we're going to the five chord, so it's going to be a related but different. Got a minute, can you help me find them please? So that organization, you know, it's like A, A, and then sometimes it's sort of A prime, so it's a with a twist, and then sometimes it's A, A, B, completely different things. So that's a really easy way to organize phrases. And it could be like a really simple idea or it could be an elaborate idea. So I could play something like this. I'll just use a D blues scale for a demonstration. I'll just make a phrase up in D blues. <laughs> Right? So if I play that exact same thing again, you have a clearer idea of what it was. And if I'm going to play it a third time, I'm now, now I've got you expecting that so I can veer off and play something different. You know, it's, it's different. And it's sort of captivating in some regard. And this could be like you could do it for a whole phrase like that one. Or you can sort of do it on a micro level where you just take two notes. Like maybe I do D to F. And then I just play that again. And then the third time I'd add to it or play it differently. And that's a good way to, to construct a phrase. And then actually, I could use that same phrase and do the same thing again. So you're sort of piggybacking the idea. So I go, no, I think I, think I can remember it. That would work. This can get as as involved as you want to, and as you practice it, you start to see different different ways of doing it. And 
don't be surprised if you start to try to implement this into your your soloing that all of the sudden you start to hear it in other people's playing because it absolutely is in there i've heard you know coltrane and brecker and herbie and chick all use this technique it's very common so what i'm going to do today for a demonstration is i'll put a, a d blues scale you know in in here so you can see it but i'm just going to play a d blues and not really think about vocabulary i'm just going to think about uh a a a a prime or a a b and then i'll do like little micro ones and big ones and i'll just play a couple courses and see how it works out and and your assignment i guess would be to listen to it and see if you can identify where where the repetitions are happening and then in your you know in your practice tracks you can go to the the inside the iwi den there's a blues in every key and minor blues in every key and you can try to implement the technique in your own playing so here's a couple courses of d minor blues There you go. I hope you can have some fun with that and I hope it's helpful. Uh, if this was helpful to you, you know, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be back soon with another lesson.